All right. So how can Sam take his mixture A and mix, mixture B and compare them? What are some things he can do? Richie. Um, he can use the six cups of to nine cups of water and stand up in five cups of concentrate to nine cups of water to see which one has more concentrate in it. Okay, so he could... So in order to compare those, because he has... Say that one more time. He has two different ratios, right? What are the ratios? He has the original one. Yep. Two thirds and five ninths. So this is five cups concentrate, six cups water, two cups concentrate, three cups water. Now you notice I'm writing down not only the uh, the numbers, but I'm also writing the the units because these aren't fractions. They're ratios. And ratios is a relationship between one unit and another unit. And so you, you don't want to be confused thinking that they're just fractions. They're way more than that. They show a relationship. All right. So can he compare these just like this? No. Yes? I was going to say maybe you could make the, um, the bottom, like multiply them so they're the same. So find a common... Denominator. Denominator. Ratio strategy. Okay, I can compare ratios by making the, and I had to fix this, the, whoa, I made a mistake. Making the denominator the same. Right? So if this is concentrate, and this is water, and this is concentrate, and this is water, I need to find this common denominator. Why does a common denominator help me understand or compare? Quinn? Because then you're comparing the same like, unit almost. I'm comparing the same, the same pieces, right? Here I have, I have nine and four. So I have like, I'm not exactly sure what that is. So what I do is I turn that into 63, something that they both go into. And now I'm comparing the same pieces and I can see, hey, how many of those pieces make that? How many of those pieces make that? And now I can compare the two. So making a common denominator, Andrew, is one way Sam can compare those two things. What's another way, Andrew? Hint, hint, hint. Vanessa? I can turn the ratio into a piece of ratio. Yes! Yes! It's perfect! <laughs> Man, you're good. You're good! Yeah! Another way I can compare a ratio is by turning it into a decimal or a percent. How do you do that? Divide. Divide. That's it, right? I just do it by dividing. The top dog goes in the... So if I have four nines, that turns into 44%. And then I would take the four over seven, I divide that, and that would get like 50-something. Maybe more. 50, I think it's like 58. So that would be a way I can compare, is turning into percent. Does that kind of make sense? These two ways are the two ways we talked about yesterday about comparing ratios. And that's what Sam needs to do in order to compare those. Turn them into percents or find common denominators. Two easy ways. Tell your partner what are the two ways that we can compare ratios. Go. So, number. Second part, Jaden. Here we go. Talk to your partner about what you came up with the four ratios. Go. Nope, no scaling. So I heard this one. Two cups of concentrate, four cups of water. Easiest one because that's the one they gave us. Two cups of concentrate, four cups of water. Again, what did I put up there? 
units, labels. So someone give me another one. Uh, Olive. Two con to six juice. How do you get the six? Well, I added up the concentrate in the water to get how much juice you have. And so this would be a part two. Oh, oh make sure you've labeled yours. And this would be a part two. Oh, right. Part. Okay, what's another one? Radana. Um, four cups of water to six cups. Four water. Six juice. Yes. And Radonna, what is that? A part two. Whole. And the last one, Ben. Um, I go down four cans of water to two cans of Holy, wow, that was incredible. How did I do that? Wow. I don't know. I just touched it and it moved. No, so. You can move it with whoa. your finger. Whoa. I don't know what's going on there. So let's go back and talk about. Um, so I'm afraid to write up here because I'm thinking it's going to move on me. Nope. Okay, so this is my question now. So those are the four ratios. There are two part to holes and there are two part to part. So the part to parts. I was able to flip them, right? Cyrus, see, I, I had the 2 over 4, and I flipped it to make 4 over 2. Why can I not do that with the part to hold? Why does that not... Yes, I can do it, but why does that make no sense to do it with a part to hold? Talk to your partner. I don't know. I really have no idea. Okay, Sai. Si. Yeah. I can't, I can't change this hole. I can't. It makes no sense if it's a part to hole to have six juice and over two constant. It does it does? That's why fractions are different than ratios. A ratio, when you understand whether it's a part to whole, part to part, I, if I understand it's a part to whole, I can't just flip it. It makes no sense at all. I can't have more of a part than a whole. Like that, that makes no sense. A fraction, I can. We call those improper fractions, right? Okay. So that's exactly what Cyrus is saying. Um, Today, we're going to be talking about this proportional relationship. We have talked about proportional relationships. And I'm just going to show you that back here, similar figures, because they have a scale factor that goes between their sides, their sides are proportional. It's just they're getting so much bigger. I know, it doesn't follow me. It doesn't like me when I go to the back of the room. So we've done proportional relationships, OK? <laughs> Okay. Like yeah. we, we go way back. Go way back, okay. Um, so a proportional relationship is something where I have something over here, but the same thing's on this side. And it's like I scaled up that juice yesterday. Did it change the flavor of the juice? No. No. I just made more of it, right? Yeah. But it's the same recipe, same juice. That's a proportional relationship. And we're going to look at how to set those up today. Retakes will happen tomorrow. We have Friday school. Okay? 9.30 to 11.30. Okay, on Friday. No, you're not allowed to take... If Mrs. Harris is there, yes. But it's Mr. Getz this week, so no. Um, and then just check your grades in Infinite Campus. I did... I, I will... I found a mistake in my grading. And the good news, it literally gave like... A point to two points to like 70% of the class. I'm whoop, whoop. <laughs> I know. Cody's like, I, my grade didn't change at all. <laughs> Darn. So it, it's just, you know. But some kids got three. A few got three points because there was, was a slight mistake. I was like, oh, wait a minute. And I caught it this morning. 
Um, please, we have this side of the room is going to go to Elise. This side is going to Jaden. Okay, if you have questions, bring your homework with you. If you have questions, put a question mark on there and then talk about it with Elise. Boom. Jaden. Oh, if you did not do your homework, do it. I know. Okay, that's a good idea. Allie, you're over there. Papel, over there. I messed everything up right now. Okay, hold on, hold on. Um, Miss Jones, will you take Josh and have him organize his binder? Sure. Get, it is organized. No, no, no. We need to get... We, he wasn't here the day that we cleaned everything out. Wait. All the warm up days and tickets, all the homework, and all the learning. Except we keep this week's learning. This week. Okay. And this week's warm up ticket. Let's do it, Josh. You and me, buddy. I'm the only one to see right here. I was thinking of these. So. Did it have Question. Remember, put question marks up there, and then talk about it, and then I'll I'll go over some question marks. Cody, 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 up here. Cody. Not with Cyrus. Up here. I agree. Why is that point eighteen now? Oh, it was. No, that's just. That's just. It's a. Yeah. Come on. You guys, any disagreements yet? We had one, but we didn't call you. Okay. Wait, how did you get false? Because I did something. On which one? False on this one? On A? Because this converts to an 8 and not a 6. So, yeah, but what, but what is she missing here? I'm missing. Unit? Simplified? Units. So what does that 6 represent? It, uh, hours that want to TV. Hours, TV. Yeah. And what's the 48 represent? Uh, all activities are... 18. Any questions over here yet? Um, I was really confused with B. With B? It's six chores, but... But, like, look, there's no... There's no chores. Yeah? So what does that tell you? They're very confused. <laughs> I was just guessing choices homework and we're like, what? That's what I do too. That what? I thought other was in the chores. I, I, I thought that other I was chores. just saying that chores yeah. were in the other. Did, did just chores or homework? I would say chores are in the other. Yeah. Well, I could I say. Well, I just said would it be all of the other? Yeah. Would it be all of the other? Or would it be? Come on. So, okay. So if you didn't put it into the other, your answer is going to be what? False. If you put it into the other, your answer is true. 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 So there you go. So either way, I, I got the same yeah. thing as her, but okay. I put it into the homework. Into the homework. Ooh, interesting. How, so it just worked out that the ratio broke down to the exact same? Yeah, I divided. Huh. Interesting. But either way, either way, you could have done it. Either way. Okay. Any other questions on those? Hey. No, I divided 48 by 6 and got 8, and I thought that was how I pushed it. But they were saying 1 6, right? So it can't be 1 6, it's got to be 1 8. You did the right work, but you need to make sure that you reduce that. It's not just 8, it's 1 8. Oh, okay. 8 over 48, and they reduced to 1, 6. Yeah, oh. he put 8 over 48. Presley, do you have any input? No? Oh. Any other, hey, any other questions on this? No. You guys are all good? I think okay. I got D. Presley is All right, guys, wrap it up. Jaden and Elise, please erase your work so we have room for next hour. Um, Please go back to your seats. We don't have any big questions. I got to go I don't know what I did. Say what? I don't know what I did. I kind of like rounded those. And then... Let's go over it. We have time. Okay. We have two minutes. All right. Um, so we got two minutes. Let's talk about C. Ryan's like, I, I don't know how I did C. She's like, I missed it. So let's talk about it. So C asks for sports, internet, and watching, and te uh, watching television took about 33%. What does 
convert into as a fraction. Cody? So we know that this is one third. Sports, internet, and watching television. What do I have to do there? Vanessa, I have to add them, right? Yeah. Thank you, Presley. Mm -hmm. So, Vanessa, if I add up sports, internet, and TV, I get 16. Yeah. What do I put that over? 48. Why 48? Why 48, Andrew? Because all the numbers together equals 48. Yeah, that's the total amount of time. So, I have 16 over... 48. Now, the question is this. Are those equal? Yeah, 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 yeah. How do you know? Ooh. How do you know? Because everyone's saying no. Olive? Because 1 times 16 equals 16, and 3 times 16 equals 48. If I reduce this, it's going to equal 1 third. 16 times 3 does equal... 48. So they are equal. Now, because it says is 33% of the time, is this a true statement or is it a false statement? True. It's a true statement. Because it is equal. C. It was a C? Oh. Yeah, not A. C. I'm behind. It's okay. All right. Um, take out your sheet for today. All right, so um, sheet for today. Sorry, do you have that sheet? And remember, keep your feet on the floor, please. Um, All right, my beautiful Okay. So, man, I want you guys to look at this. So, already you can tell, since we're talking about proportions, and our goal for today is that we can understand that a proportional relationship, understanding how to create a proportional relationship can help us solve a problem with ratios. So, in order for me to set up a proportion, I must, my ratios must have units that are the same. They must match. So I'm going to show you kind of what that means. Here, I have a proportion. I've scaled up this proportion by what? Three. three. So this is times three. And the bottom is scaled the same as well. So this is a proportion. This is times three. This is times three. Plus, with ratios, it's not just good enough the numbers match, but your units must match. This is concentrate, that's concentrate. This is juice, that's juice. Bingo. They are equal. Over here, yes, there's, the numbers are scaled by three, but it doesn't work. Why? Because one's juice and one's One's juice and one's water. That is not the same thing. Juice includes concentrate. Water does not. So although I made these numbers match, what I'm using over here doesn't match unit-wise. So I can't, those are not equal. The numbers might be equal. It doesn't work out. Because the units don't match. The units must match. And you'll see why and how that works out. I'm going to work with you and we're going to do A together. So, first thing I'm going to do is going to, I'm going to read the question and then I'm going to write down everything I know Scarlett. So and you can help me with this. Assume that each camper will get a half a cup of juice. Okay? How many batches are needed to make juice for 240 campers. So Scarlett, I'm talking about mix A. What do I know right now? That 
Bingo. Okay. I have 240 campers. Okay, what else do I know? Give me one more thing. So one camper equals half a cup of, and I'm just going to call it J, okay? What else do I know? Quinn. Um, What's my mixture? Oh, um, two cups of concentrate. Um, two cups of okay, I know that. Two con to three water. Do I know anything else? Think about it. This is a part to part. Do I know anything else? Press, do I know anything else? Sai? Put your feet down. Now they are. Okay. Two con to five J. And that's cups of juice. That's cups of juice. So, so if I know how much juice does my batch A make? Yeah, Cyrus already said it, five. So one batch equals five cups of J. Tanner. Okay. I've pretty much written down everything I know. So how much does mix A make? It means five cups of juice. Five cups of juice. Okay. How does that help me? Andrew. Um, keep making the same batch. Okay. I can keep making that same batch. So let's say I make two batches. How many cups is that going to make? Okay. Why did why is that important, Andrew? Because you give a cup to each. How much? Half a cup to each camper. So Jaden, if I give a half a cup to each camper, how much is one batch? Ten, ten not ten cups, ten campers. So one, so one batch equals 10 campers. So if I know one batch is 10 campers, Cyrus, mm -hmm. I have 240 campers. Okay. How many batches? Uh, You're a math kid. Do you know that? You are. No. <laughs> I'm going to convert you. Yeah. So I need 24 batches. Now, we did this mathematically using logic, which is great. Logic is always a way that you can tackle these problems, right? What do I know? Write it down. And I just kind of keep working through it. This is what I want to show you. How to use a proportion to make this work. Because then it cuts out some of those little things where logic might not quite work. So on your paper, I want you to follow along. My question basically tells me my initial proportion. My question says, how many batches do I need for... 240 kids, right? How many batches, X is batches, for 240 campers? I know that's going to equal something. I know it has to equal my mixture. So, what's my mixture? Two cups of concentrate. Two cups of concentrate. Two. Two con, whoops, con, to three water. Okay, what's wrong with this? Yes, what's wrong? What did we say at the beginning of class, and it was on the top of your paper, 
Press. The unit okay, your units must, must match. So this is where we just use a little bit of logic. So we weren't where you, I said we're not going to use total logic. So batches to campers. What is this right here? A batch. That's a batch. Bingo. Okay. So that's a bat. Oh. <laughs> you. Why, does does that work? Why does my so board bad. not like me? It's new, isn't it? <clears throat> Don't do it? I know, I know, I know, I know. All right. 240. That'd be really funny. Board treats you terribly. Kids. All right. So now we know that two cups of concentrate to three cups of water is one batch. Okay. Yeah. What do I need over here? How many campers is one batch? So now, guys, so this is batches. So you see a scale factor going from here to there? 24. 24. So if I have a scale factor 24 going there, what do I have going this way? 24. 24. And what's 1 times 24? 24. So I need 24 batches. You see how setting up that proportion helps. Oh. And I'm going to tell you, this is where it starts, Cyrus, is that you're going to get that initial proportion from the question. It's going to say something over something. And this was batches, which we don't know, over 240 campers. So I get that, and then I have to use some logic to figure out how to make my mixture make the other proportion with the same units. Okay, here's your job. Work with your partner. Do B. Cyrus, you work with Mrs. Jones. Do B. Do, yeah, just do it with B. Just do it. We're doing B. No, no, no. Uh, one, do one with B. Oh, one. Good answer, man. You're sharp. No. Okay. I like this. Oh, no, you are. I like this. I need to put bees at the end of these desks. They need to call hooks. Whatever. And I know. I know. Yes, it does. Probably in the back. Maybe. Totally. You liar. Come on. B. Oh. Talk, talk. Work with her first. That's all, okay? This is that part that I want you guys to work on. I will come by if you're both confused, no doubt. Where's your proportion? Your initial proportion. But you're telling me it's 28 campers per batch, but I don't even see campers or batches as units. Fourteen. You each get a half a cup. So fourteen times fourteen is twenty-two. Okay. So you get twenty-eight camp. So this is how many batches one one batch makes. It feeds twenty-eight campers. Got it. Okay. Yes. So what's our initial? Hey, Vanessa, what's our initial ratio? Right from our question. Well, how many batches are needed to make juice for 240 campers? So what? Not one. It says how many batches. So do I know what batches is? No. no. So it's X over 240. This is kids. This is batches. Okay. And now I'm using mix B. Oh. 
Remember, that first, the question is going to give you what the ratio has to be. Okay. I get it. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah. Did you guys figure that out? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to do it another way, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't know how many batches are needed. you got this? Cody, you got this? So what's my other side of this ratio? Of this proportion? I've got one side of the proportion. What's the other side of the proportion? I'm using mix B. Okay. So what's the other side of this proportion here? I have one side of the proportion. What's the other side of the proportion? Remember, I'm using mix B. And honestly, you can write the wrong thing at first. It works. As opposed to not writing anything. So if you were going to write something, Andrew, what would be the other side right now? Of what? Of this proportion. I've got batches over kids, because that's what it asked me. It says I have to use mix B. What might be something I might write on this side? If I'm looking at mix B. Five over nine. Okay, good. That's what I want you to write. That's concentrate. And what's the nine? Water. Water. But what do we know? This is why this helps. We. What do we know about this? Yeah. That it's part and then nine plus five would be the whole. Okay. And this, if I combine them, I get a whole, right? Yes. And that... If this is batches and that's concentrate, this is not the proportion I'm looking for, right? Mm -hmm. So how much is this in batches? One batch. One batch. Hold on. This makes one batch. Okay, hold on. So now I can change this so it matches a little bit. This makes one batch. But it's 14 cups, right? That's what you're saying. It's 14 cups. So if I put 14 cups down here, still doesn't match. So I have to think, how many cups? How many cups feed a kid? Yeah. A half. So if I have 14, it would feed 28 kids. So you see how like sometimes putting the wrong thing down can help you get to the right answer because you're constantly asking yourself, does that unit match that unit? Nope. I got, I got concentrate to cups that, or I have concentrate to whatever it may be. Right. And I have to figure, how do I manipulate this so it matches the question? And then you get your ratio. And so 28 to 240, what's the scale factor there? Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah? No, no way. <laughs> you definitely cannot see that. So what do I have to do? Divide. Yeah, you can divide or you can multiply by one fifth or five. All right. It's pretty good there. Um, okay. So, I can divide to figure out how many times 28 goes into 240. And what's the answer? Um, five. I mean, sorry, sorry. The, like the, no, the five. Flash? So, this is where you have to, this is where I go 28 into 240. And this is where you have to, you guys, remember I keep telling you guys, in this class, you will have to do the math. Like, you're not going to be able to just look at it anymore like you did in sixth. It just doesn't work anymore. You're going to have to do the math. 
So here I'm doing the math. 28 goes into 240. I'm going to guess eight times because 10 would be 280. So that is 64. That's 16 plus 6 is 22. It looks like I'm right. I have to borrow. I get 16 as my remainder. That's good because it's less than 28. That's good. Bring down the zero. Ah, wait a minute. Five because that's half of. So I go five times that. 14. 20, that's less than 28. 200. So about how many? 8.5. What is that 8.5 represent? What? Nine. Nine. It rounds up to nine. Okay. So this is about nine. Nine, nine what? Batch. I need nine batches of what? Juice. Of mix B. B. Okay. All right. Um, you have enough time to tackle D. And D is interesting. This is such a cool question. Because I'm just going to get you started. Read D, Andrew. On page 11. Oh, okay. Read that one more time. Because remember, the question's going to tell you what you're trying to find, Cyrus. Yeah. For each recipe, how much concentrate is going to be in one cup of juice? What? What's the X mean? Batch. 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 No, read it again. Concentrate. 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 It says how much concentrate. How much concentrate to make one cup of juice? So this is going to equal something, and we're going to be using all of the, we're going to use the recipes off from page 10, these recipes right here. So what's mix A recipe? Uh, two cups. Uh, two cups, con. Three, three water. But I got a problem, don't I? No, it's uneven. Th these match, but, the but these don't. Ryan. So, if you make it, so like, two times three water, would you just make it two con and five juice? Five juice, because I know that my juice and water, my water and concentrate make my, make my juice. So, instead of three water, five J. Five J. Now, does everything match? Yes. Do you see a scale factor? Okay, what's the scale factor going from here to here? Five. Five. Uh-oh, but wait a minute. I'm going this way. Now I'm going... So what's it going the other way? One-fifth. One the reciprocal of five. So, how many cups of concentrate do I need? What's one-fifth times two? Two... Fifths, right? One fifth times two over one equals. So I need two fifths cups concentrate if I'm going to make one cup of juice. That's with mix A. I want you to do mix B, C, and D. Go. You guys, whoop. Um, said focus x over one, x is the con, and one is the j for juice. Um, and then that equals, or that would the mix b is um five concentrate over nine of water. Then to make it so 
they match, um, you would change this to 5, concentrate over 14, um, juice. So, you're doing one times, they can't see my paper. <laughs> so, you're doing one times 14, um, to get 14 juice, so we'd have to do 5 times 1 14th, which would be, um, uh, 5 14th, right? Yeah. Did you, well, okay, I want you to do D, I want you to mix your B, C, um, and D mix So, you'd have to make question D. 5 14th. On the back side of or you'd have oh, I just pinched your nerve in my neck. Okay. So you'd have five fourteen of cup of concentrate. Yeah. Um. I don't hate math, but it's not. And mix C. You would do the X con over one J again, and it would be. One, two, one, okay. con, hey, at least when you and two, uh, water. Yay! So you would, um, change it so it's, um, one con over three water. So, yeah, or three juice. Sorry. Gonna say. All right, guys, put away this. We will start right on this tomorrow. Tomorrow we're gonna basically have almost like a full <laughs> no, 15 minutes of this work. Um, I finished something for once. Get your planners up. Planners. I'm cooler than nothing like that. Okay. We got number ten. Number ten on page twenty-two. Get that in your planner. So I'm going to give you some background on this. And then I want you to talk to your partner about it. Otis is having a party. Okay? He plans, listen, he plans, he's invited 128 people. He's got a lot of friends. Otis is, he's, he's, pop, he's a popular dude, man. So here's the thing, though. He's going to give juice. He's planning on giving each person a cup of juice. He's a nice guy. So, here's the deal. He's written down this ratio to figure out how much concentrate he's going to need to buy. So now that you know the background of the story, your job is, what does one represent? What does four represent? What does 128 represent? And what does X represent? I want you to talk to your partner about that right now. 30 seconds, go. Don't write it yet, Josh. Talk to your partner. Dylan, uh, Scott, take, take off your hoodie, put it on my desk. I took, I took uh, Cyrus's earlier, and I'm taking yours. I already told you, no hoodie. I gotta be consistent. Okay, Ben. What is the one? What is one equal? One equal one batch. A batch, Andrew. One equals how much concentrate? Yes. Concentrate. One equals concentrate. What does the four equal, Radana? The juice. Four equals the juice. Now, we if we know one side of the proportion, do we know the other side? Yes. Yes. So what does 128 equal? Juice. Juice. Cups of juice. 
and I'll just put cups of J. What does what does the X equal? X equals his concentrate. He that's what he's trying to figure out. This is his recipe. His recipe is one cup of concentrate, three cups of water, which makes four cups of juice. But he needs to have 128 cups of juice because how many people are coming? 128. He's a popular guy. So, how much concentrate does he need? Do we see a scale factor? 32. How'd you get 32, Josh? Uh, I divided by, I divided 4 by 128. Okay. He said, wait, 4 goes 128, 32 times. We've got a scale factor, Jaden. We have a scale factor of 32 that way. So, lucky for you guys, check this out. Scale factor is going the same way. So, what's the scale factor up top? 32. 32. What's 1 times 32? 32. So, if X equals 32, what does that 32 mean? What does that represent? So when he goes to, when Otis goes shopping at the new natural grocers, because he's super excited to have natural grocers in town, natural grocers, um, <laughs> that'd be so cool as a teacher if like you got like kickbacks. You gotta say not sponsored. How come we can't do that? I was so disappointed with the natural grocers. So, so, so here we go. Um, so he goes to natural grocers and he sees one of the organic, um, frozen concentrates and there's two cups in each one. He knows I'll have to buy 16. He doesn't have to guess. He doesn't have to. And then he can just take his cup, pour it in the juice and give you a cup of juice when you come through the door. And if he doesn't like you, he'll say, you don't get a cup. Guys, we'll see you later. Hey, come by at the end of school. Grab your hoodie, okay? Yeah. What if Otis hates And just, you know, hey, I took Scarlet's too. I know. All right. I just want you to know I am a fair guy. But I do res I understand you guys need to follow. So, math tests are tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. What? Seven. Seven. Yeah. Stop it. Like and subscribe.